is that um, there's no equipment on the house that's dedicated to be uh, to be used for ambulance purposes. Um, and the ones that I mean, the ambulances that are actually available to be used uh, for ambulance purposes uh, have difficulty getting to the destination because of poor infrastructure. Um, and just generally long distances between where you need to get to and where the hospitals are. Um, and so, given that, we, the problem shows that we have a lot of Toyota Hilux vehicles in the area ready to be repurposed into makeshift ambulances. Um, and this combined with military, limited monetary resources, we found that we found we created a creative solution to combat this issue of not having enough well. The ambulances to service a large and sparsely populated area. So, you know the area. Okay, so the current issues with just using the trail Hilux is that the open truck bed is unsafe for occupants. Like, literally, if you make a strong right turn, you're going to fly over that. You're not really secured into the, you're not really secured in the truck bed, right? Um, there's no protection from the environment, so. It doesn't rain a lot in the condo, but when it does, it's going to be kind of uncomfortable for the patients scratching the back of the bathroom, open truck, and they're just going to get soaked. Um, or even worse, there'll be rain and moisture can be worse, and infections are one of the things they're being sent to the hospital for. Um, and this doesn't, this also, this kind of environment also lacks a sterile environment, so uh, not only can it rain, but um, dust, any sort of other foreign particles can make medical conditions worse. Um, and we also need to consider the need to store expensive, electrical, uh, expensive medical equipment, such as EEGs, um, oxygen tanks, uh, ventilators, etc. Anything that needs to, anything that is necessary for that use case. And also, uh, we consider the possibility of rollovers because this is, because we expect the truck to be in places where there are not uh, very developed with, with um, little developed infrastructure, so a rollover is totally possible. So we want to make sure that the patient is secure and safe if the car flips over. So our solution is to basically make a metal camper that can go on the back of the trunk bed and just slot it. And that can be made from like readily available things, things you'll find on the scrapper, like metal, and like new bicycle parts, which I heard my comment as well. Uh, we'll be using the existing attachment points on the truck bed, and that can also be used to attach the stretcher once you roll a patient and do a copy secure to the truck. Right and because of the uh, need for filtration of air inside the, uh, the truck, so they can actually operate on the patient without any germs and keep the department clean, we can also add an air purifying system that can sample air into the uh, back of the truck. My favorite part of this is the communications forehead. A very affectionately be named at the forehead because it will, uh, it will be attached onto the top of the uh, cab of the pickup truck. So imagine those U-Haul fans with the big foreheads that have the label, uh, the, have the label on the side that says like "Mom's Attic." Right? That area can be repurposed for communications equipment, and I think it's a great place for that because it's on the top of the truck, and, and it's a great area to. It's a great place to mount equipment that will receive and transmit uh, video, video signals. Uh, also, if we need like parasensitive equipment and like expensive equipment, you can also use like since we don't have a second passenger, and the second passenger is like in the back operating on patient, we can use that captain seat to store sensitive, expensive equipment if need be. That area can generally be used as as needed. So if you need to start equipment there, you can do it there, you can need batteries for additional power, you can also store in that area, or if you just want to find an extra friend along with you, you can store them in that area as well. So the main things that we want to consider that are outlined in our problem for are access to or reliable access to remote areas, affordability, having medical supplies on the vehicle, having adequate space to work with the patient to stabilize condition while they're being while they're in transport, um, having decent, uh, having enough space for communications equipment to keep in contact with um, local medical services, uh, and also 
a system that's robust enough to keep up with the uh, extreme weather conditions of Congo or going off road and making sure that all of those systems stay off, stay operational no matter where you go. So what do we do? We uh, for the camper, we actually think about designing a little frame that can fit on the back. That'll be made of scrap metal, of course, and it'll be easily made by people in the area, just as tight welding. You don't have to create like entire structure for it. And on top of that, because it's just a like frame kind of ribcage kind of structure, we just put a tarp over it and zip tie that to a frame to create this uh, area that's protected from the environment. And because the tarp is not permeable, rain will get in and you keep a relatively sterile environment inside. Uh, and also because if you use bike frames, they're likely going to be made of aluminum, lightweight, keeps a uh, load off of the truck. We wanted to make this solution something that was easily repairable and easily transferable to any pipes. Because uh, if you, because definitely we can design uh, new hiluxes or we can add, we can modify existing hiluxes, the actual truck itself, but that requires a lot of technical expertise. Having a frame that is lightweight and able to be moved around with different trucks allows uh, allows for different trucks to be used. So, for example, if your if your truck breaks down, you can move it to another truck and then use that truck instead. Or my favorite point is if you need to move that off and have it stay at a have it, and you can have it stay at a location for extended amount of time. Uh, in case that patient needs like long term care that is that is close to uh, where they live uh, or Maintenance. Oh, and if you want to know what it's going to look like, it's supposed to be looking similar to this image right here, ignoring the lobby stock uh, water mark thing. But it's going to be looking very similar to this, and instead of covered with a tarp, just so that it's actually somewhat steel for a medical reason. Let's see what that's for. That's where all the technical, that's where all the communications equipment is going to go. <laughs> and travel considerations. Because we'll be going on roads that are very poorly maintained all the time. We need it to be reliable since it's going to be going to people who are in possibly life threatening situations. So I thought maybe we can fill the tires with something like non compressible I thought about using foam, but that's not gonna be very effective. It can compress and like it does not work that well. They well with silicon to increase durability, make it like somewhat airless actually. And uh also, because you're going to be driving very dusty roads, air filtration can be done uh, a lot of dust out. That could possibly like, be a duct from the outside of the car into a filter, which are also very abundant, and just have that be pushed into the cabin where you're actually going to be working on the patient. The fan that we're thinking of using, uh, fans that you can find attached to the front of engines, uh, usually those fans are, that are used to drive air into the um, engine radiator as you drive, those can be taken off of broken cars and repurposed uh, to push air into this to push air into this uh, medical module of our system. Yeah, there's only like positive air pressure because of course when you're using a car, it's not going to be airtight. So having that positive air pressure kind of keeps all the dust out. And because we're using a tarp, it's very easily repairable. Uh, you can use that tie just to like catch up if need be. Again, with the structure of our model, of our system, we're going to it's going to be ripped with um, with bicycle frame uh, repurposed for this uh, for this application. And so, if the truck does roll over, those frames should be strong enough. Uh, multiple of those frames should be strong enough to hold up uh, the truck, um, the, from the truck from collapsing onto the patient. And also, given that the patient will be secured onto a stretcher, which will also be secured onto the bed of the truck. Um, I did a very, very rough estimate. I looked up at like basically the equivalent of car fats in the area, um, and I and I gave a ballpark estimate of about two thousand dollars worth of highlights, and that's basically kind of the major cost for this solution. Um, the base solution should consist of many available parts from uh, in, from other salvageable uh, from other. They can be found in like scrap yards where you're gonna find like a lot of like broken stuff, maybe appliances, bikes, vehicles, all of those can have salvage of metal that can be used to up in our camper. Exactly. We wanted to make sure that we used car batteries as an onboard power source because those are definitely readily available. And 
Um, and having a lot of them can help with increase reliability, and a lot of these spread out around the truck so that we can just evenly distribute weight and reduce the chance of rolling. Um, and we also, we also thought about how uh, there is probably existing communications equipment in um, the better off areas of the Congo. So let's see, the capital city probably has like ambulances that actually have like communications equipment, or like police cars have um, radios to communicate with each other and dispatch. Uh, those similar, those type of equipments can be can be, inside with, um, can be taken from decommissioned police cars and other. Um, other public vehicles and be repurposed and be used in our uh, application for this medical monument. Um, and if needed, we can have a, a custom, if we really need to, we can have a single custom communications parts and then uh, send those to the And I will expand on that in a second. Please, oh, okay. So for medical supplies, we Given that our given that our solution is more constrained, it's actually really multi-purpose. And depending on what kind of call that you're servicing, um, whether it's like a heart attack or like a routine medical checkup or like prescription medicine, um, you can attach anything that you want inside of the inside of the inside and outside of the modular cavity attachment. So given that this is like a grid-like structure that's going to be covered with the this is going to be like a grid-like structure that's going to be um, Holding up the holding up the module, um, there are a lot of attachment points for equipment, and we propose storing the critical, the most critical life-saving equipment inside of this module, inside of the module, so that paramedic working on the patient, stabilizing the patient, will have easy access to them, while non-essential equipment such as pills or extra fuel or tires are going to stay on the outside of the truck, so that um, they're so accessible when you stop the truck and, and you get out and. Uh, access to those parts of the vehicle. Um, as well, we also propose using uh, attaching the fabric grids on top of the tarp so that it makes it easier to attach additional equipment or um, parts on the outside of the truck by simply just tying a tiny knot on the outside of the structure. Also, taking into consideration that the Congo likely has not that many hospitals that are very spaced out. That like you might need as many medical supplies as we can fit onto this vehicle 